This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnston. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 317, baby. Oh yeah. In today's episode, I speak to a very special guest. Her name is Masha. She is also an English teacher and we talk about something which is very close to my heart because Masha contacted me and said she would like to talk about her method of teaching English, which is through books and not just any books, through self-development books. Okay, now I know lots of people are not fans of these books. If you don't know what they are, they are books that, let's say, try to teach you things about how to become better in some way, maybe a better person, a better parent, whatever. Now, I also thought these books were absolutely ridiculous until I was about 27-ish. But since then, I have been a very big fan of these books. I think because I was such a terrible person, so I needed to develop, I needed to become a better person. And I hope that I have done this. So Masha and I talk about these books, obviously her method. And as you can imagine, I end up talking a lot like usual. Sorry about that. So I share lots of things which I have never shared before. Some things which I would be too embarrassed to share in front of my close friends. So please don't tell them about what I say on this podcast. And it's just a very nice, warm podcast. I always think if you talk about books, it's a good thing, isn't it? So that's what we do. Now, I will talk to you all again at the end. Obviously, there is no vocabulary or anything. It's just a nice chat about books. One last thing. We had a problem with the audio. I say we. I actually mean me because I forgot to record with my microphone. So we are listening to the Zoom recording so that audio is not the best but it's not that bad I'm sure you probably won't even notice a difference but you know how much I love audio so apologies for the audio quality today that was my fault but anyway here is the conversation happy listening hello Masha and welcome to rock and roll English hello Martin thank you for inviting me thank you very much for coming I'm very pleased to talk to you because what we spoke about in our pre podcast chat, you, your teaching methodology is something which interests me a lot. But before we get to that, just tell us quickly who you are. Well, I'm an ordinary English teacher who lives in Spain. Now I've been teaching English for about 20 years. Mm. And uh, now I teach in a public school for um, teens and mm -hmm. also I teach English for adults, like private tuition. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, I'm interested in uh, teaching English through reading, especially nonfiction books. Yes. So maybe explain to people what nonfiction books are, just in case anyone doesn't know. Well, nonfiction books are those books that teach you some valuable, valuable things. They entertain and make you learn a lot mm -hmm. of things. Uh, these books are, are on different topics like personal development, spirituality, marketing, whatever. Whatever you are interested in, you can find it in nonfiction books. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm actually a big fan of nonfiction books. And I must admit, so in my life, for the first 25 years, I didn't read anything except if I was made to in school, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then from about, yeah, about 28, I started reading these like self-development non-fiction books because before that I thought they were the stupidest thing in the world. I thought whoever reads one of those books is a complete idiot. <laughs> And now I, I find myself reading them. I don't get to read as much as I would like to, but 
I think they've changed they've changed my life. So what's your story with these well, non-fiction books? Pretty much the same. I right. hated reading when I was a teen, really. I mm -hmm. I thought it was a waste of time. Even my father bribed me with eating out and buying me some new clothes just to make me read one single book. And it was impossible, even though. And I've read a lot of I, I read a lot, but the books that I was not interested in completely, you know, when you get your graduation uh, for master's degree to teach English, for example, you have to read a lot of stuff. Yeah. And then you, what I did, I read them, I passed the exam and I forgot of what course. I read. And then maybe five years ago, I started reading these nonfiction books. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought, why not to try it? Because I, I was in the period of my life looking for the answers mm -hmm. and I didn't have any tool to, yeah. to help myself become a happy person and be satisfied with my life. So I thought about the books. Why not to try it? Mm -hmm. And what about you, Martin? Why did you start reading the books of that type? Strangely enough, it was actually someone who is on the podcast who maybe you won't know, but listeners will know called Dan the Man who told me about these books one book in particular and then he said read this and like you I thought you know why not try and so then I did and then since then I have read almost nothing else and some of my friends even now kind of still laugh at me for reading these books and the way I answer that is I ask them do you think you are perfect are you a perfect human being to which obviously everybody says no. So then I say, okay, so if you're not perfect, surely you want to improve, no? And then they would say, yes. And then I say, well, how do you intend on doing that? Because when you read these books, it gives you strategies, new ideas, and to help you improve, to... <laughs> Obviously, I don't think it's perfect for anyone. It, I don't think it's possible for anyone to become perfect, but mm -hmm. to constantly improve. Because when I finished university, I thought that was it. Like, I didn't need to learn anything else again in my life. I thought I don't need to read any books. I don't need to do anything. And for the first few years after university, that's very much what happened. I would just sit at home and watch football for six hours on a Sunday. And when I think back to that period, I just think, my God, what was I doing? I was just <laughs> wasting my life. Yes, yes, absolutely. It happened to me the same. I was uh, looking for graduation, like at last uh, I, I've done it. Now I can teach and I, I can stop learning. Well, no, I was mistaken, absolutely mistaken at yeah. the time. Exactly. And I've actually recently got into audiobooks because I also I've always found them quite difficult. And even now I do if it's not the person that wrote the book reading it. When the person that wrote the book is reading it, then I can listen. If it's just a computer voice, then I can't. But I have very little time now with two young children to sit down and read, so I often find myself doing house chores like the washing up and like putting the toys away. And that often takes an hour. So I often listen to one of these books. But don't you find that it's difficult to, to keep the knowledge when you read, when you only listen? It is. In fact, I'm actually listening to some that I have actually already read um, ah. because yeah, I like to underline things, etc. but now I'm listening to ones which I've already read because I just they just put me in a better mood. And so, refresh. Yes, read, exactly. Yeah. So they just make me feel better. So I go to bed happy instead of going to bed like, oh, God. So oh. <laughs> that's my tactic. Well, but it's a good activity to listen to audiobook. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you combine both things, reading and listening at the same time would be even better. Yeah, I've heard people talk about this, actually. The, yeah, that's definitely a good thing to do. So how do you merge this with teaching then? Tell us about your methodology, because it's something I have actually considered 
myself quite a few times, but I've never really come up with how to do it. So, well, I'm organizing the book club, a flexible book club where people mm -hmm. decide what they want to read. It mm -hmm. uh, should be in nonfiction for sure. And then uh, we meet twice a month mm. for online discussion. Mm -hmm. And during the months, oh, there is a Telegram group where we communicate, we share mm. our ideas, opinions, we learn the language mm -hmm. um, during this period. So it's like they do not disconnect from learning. And especially this is helpful because people um, usually cannot uh, maintain this reading routine. And when there are other people who read, they motivate each other, you know, Absolutely. and give any strategies, hacks, how to keep reading. Absolutely. Yeah. In the Rock and Roll English family, which is the membership area to the podcast, we also have a book club. And very often I'm the one that doesn't read the book, but there have been times when I have read the book. And yeah, knowing other people are reading and then you can meet up with them to discuss it is extremely, extremely motivating. The problem is I put something for people to vote which book and I, I have suggested many times nonfiction books, but nobody wants <laughs> nobody wants them. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's always a kind of story. Um, so that people want to entertain themselves. Yeah, exactly. And this is a type of uh, activity that people like spending time reading something. But if you can combine entertainment and learning something useful, why yeah. not to do these two things at the same time? Yes, exactly. So, how many books? So you said you meet two times a month. How many books do you read? A month, in... one book one book so you meet two times but you discuss the same book two times the same yeah. book. exactly different right. parts okay um, people do not have stress because uh the thing is you can read what you want and discuss what you want when you come to the session yeah exactly yeah it's the same at the book clubs that i have attended because sometimes they do it without me but when i'm there for example once i didn't finish the book but I was still able to contribute. And the first time we did this, we actually read Animal Farm by George Orwell, which, okay, is a fiction book, but I think there are lots of things you can learn from that book. And I remember I was having difficulty reading that because I decided to read it in Italian just to give myself an extra challenge. Mm -hmm. And the one of the great things, I think, about reading a book well, there are a few things like the sense of accomplishment when you finish the book. There aren't many greater feelings than when you close that book and you think, oh, I've done it. <laughs> I've done it. Yes, yes, that's that's a great thing. And when you break it down, like lots of people say, oh, you know, book's too long, etc. But I remember specifically for that book, I remember saying I don't have time and the book's not very big that um, an animal farm i think it's about 100 pages maybe a, a little bit more and then i just remember thinking if i read 10 pages a day i can i can do this in 10 days so once you set yourself a target like that so it, a normal book a normal non-fiction book i would say is about 250 pages would you agree mm, well normally yes they are yeah around big a, yeah. a, a, around about that yeah. so so yeah if in one month that's that's less than 10 pages a day so you can read a book a month yeah, with, so with less than 10 pages a day <laughs> and you can pick up a shorter book like for example mm -hmm. um if you know robin sharma the monk who sold his ferrari have you read it <laughs> i haven't but funnily enough that is a book i suggested in the book club it's but, a fantastic book but it didn't win unfortunately no. so um <laughs> they don't know what they are losing <laughs> <laughs> right so yeah I, I missed out on that one yeah so this this book made a great impact in my life really because right. 
it's a uh, it's really really beautiful story and okay let's talk about this then what books have made an impact on you and for what reason mm. this one is number one mm -hmm. yeah uh, it's basically because uh, it talks about what our priorities in life and mm -hmm. how to elim eliminate unnecessary things. Yeah. And it resonated with me because it's the story about the lawyer who changed his life completely and find the purpose. Um, another one could be maybe Atomic Habits, James mm -hmm. Clear, very classical, that teaches you the importance of a habit and a small action to get big results and this is super important in learning a language absolutely yeah um another one that i liked very much was building your story brand by donald miller mm, yeah i've read that book yeah yes what do you think about it yeah no it was a really good book and made me think about my business like rock and roll english and so they mention in the book that you need to be able to explain to someone in basically one sentence what you do and it took me years to think of that sentence and even now i sometimes have difficulty but it really changed the way i thought because i thought right what am i doing okay how how can i explain this to people so that's more of a like marketing book though isn't it which which again I read lots of books about marketing, business, because when you're in this industry that we're in, you have to learn to do many things. You have to learn how to market yourself. You have to learn how to write Absolutely. emails. You have to learn how to create graphics, create videos, everything. So every time I have to do one of these things, generally my first thing is go to Amazon and buy a book. That's right. When you have a question, there is always the right book with the, yeah. the answer you need. Exactly. Um, one of another book which I have read and that I'm listening to again now is I can't remember his name now, but it's called Think Like a Monk. Have you heard of this one? I've heard about it, but I have never read it. No, because good. I love books like that that have lots of stories in them which i think that that always stay with you so lots of especially monk stories they've all, always got um a lovely like meaning behind them one of my favorite ones is so two monks were sent on a very long journey and they had to go but on this journey there was only one rule that they were not allowed to talk to women so they set off, were walking along, and then they arrived at a bridge and there was a woman on one side who couldn't cross the bridge and she was crying and said, my son is over there. He needs my help. Please, please, can you help me? One monk said nothing, didn't speak to her. And then the older monk just picked her up, crossed the bridge put her down she said thank you so much he didn't respond and kept walking and then the younger monk for the next 10 hours in his mind was saying why did he do that he, he spoke to a woman we're not allowed to speak to women and said finally couldn't bear it anymore said why did you do that why did you talk to that woman and he said my brother i put that woman down 10 hours ago you are still carrying her in your mind. You That's need to fun. let go. Things like that, I think, I don't know. I just remember those stories forever. And that's that's the great thing about these stories. Yeah. And how do you um, how do you share all everything that you learn from the book or with your friends? Do you talk about the insights that you learn from the books or I would generally be too embarrassed to tell my friends because they would probably laugh at me. Uh, yeah, which, that's what happens. Yeah, I know. It's 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 strange, isn't it? That even if I tell my books, some of the, the some if I tell my friends some of the books I read, they would immediately laugh. But I do always tell my wife. She is the one person <laughs> who I 
always okay. enjoy telling these does stories read? too. Does she read the books? Not the ones I do, no. And my wife is Italian, so I buy the books generally in English. So she would have to read it in Italian. And then I have the added challenge of telling her about this book in, in Italian. Italian. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so before I had children, mm. I've actually got one thing I love to do is buy notepads. So I underline everything in the book like the interesting things and then when I finish the book I take my notepad and I write like my takeaways from that book so I've got like four or five notepads and every now and again I just flick through them and have a read and again that is a really uplifting experience but all of this is before I had children <laughs> because then when you have children it, you don't have time <laughs> no exactly so before for example I, I read books about creating a strong morning routine I used to do that I used to wake up early go to bed early wake up early go to the gym and do something great like read a, like 10 pages of a book and mm -hmm. by 8 a.m I was thinking like this is the best day ever and I was really like mentally prepared and felt physically strong now I go to bed late because that's the only time I can sleep like sorry children? The only... children go to sleep early so no what? what I wanted to say was I go to bed late because the evening when they are sleeping is the only quiet time so I work in the evenings I go to bed late they wake up early so I'm immediately tired and <laughs> I'm immediately on the back foot. So instead of like me, another thing that I read in a book called by Jim Quick. Have you heard of him? No. Okay. Um, I can't remember the name. I think it's called Quick Learning. He spoke about a thermometer, which takes the temperature of a room or a thermostat, with a thermostat being the thing which sets the temperature. So he said, like, what are you? Are you the person that sets the temperature in the room to say like this room will be 20 degrees? Or are you the thermometer, the thing that receives What's it? That's a great metaphor. I yeah. like it. Whilst much. before I definitely was the thermostat, <laughs> these days I very much feel thermometer. like <laughs> the thermometer. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so you do these you said book clubs with is it an online thing that you do yeah i see it's absolutely online okay yeah. excellent okay so tell us where people can find out more about you then if anyone wants to take part well, in your book they, club. Can, they can follow me in on instagram if they mm -hmm. want english to freedom okay on my account or they can see videos on youtube the same channel uh, then there is a link in my Instagram where they can subscribe for uh, for the book club and leave mm -hmm. their information. So then I can contact them afterwards. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I will put links to all of this in the show notes. So thank you very much for coming on, Masha. It's been a pleasure talking to you about this. I always find when... I find someone that reads these books. I have an immediate connection with that person and I could talk all day because I feel like someone understands the love it's of the these same books. language. Yes, absolutely correct. Yes, that's exactly. why we sometimes change our friendship, our friends, because mm -hmm. we change and the people around us also become different right mm, exactly yeah so thanks again for coming on and we hope to speak to you soon thank you very much martin thanks a lot see you soon bye 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 bye